This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, it's Alex, it's the Ramble. We're on till midnight tonight from the East Coast of the United States. Larry Bowles Brown is a comic by profession. He is very funny by profession. What else are you by profession? Oh yeah. Uh, nothing. That's it. This county is it. He's a hooker on the side. Yeah. I wish. <laughs> Gee, if you were a woman, would you be a hooker? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I just uh, imagine the creeps I have to put up with. Yeah, well, uh, but try, think about trying to be a hooker as you look right now. Would you? Would you be attracted <laughs> to men? <laughs> I would think there are like, aren't there? There are high end hookers that uh, yeah maybe have their choice of clientele. Maybe that wouldn't be a bad job. I don't know. Well, yeah, if you have the ability to say, no, I won't do him. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I'll do him. Okay. Well, then then fine. You know, but then you're just like any date I ever had, so. <laughs> it's, you always like to make jokes about hookers. Hooker, uh, yeah, they, they were, they're so funny. I don't know why that is so funny, but. Uh... Why do you find hookers funny? <laughs> the word, The word's funny, which, uh. Apparently it came from a Civil War general. Uh, general Hooker, yeah. Yeah, and the hookers followed his uh, troops. Y- yeah, yeah. But, uh, but uh, is it amazing that that term came into being in the Civil War and has not changed? Yeah, that's am- it is uh, 160 that, years. Yeah, that's amazing. You would not think that to be true. Well, maybe it's kind of a good word because they, like, hook on to you, I guess. You know, it kind of fits. So. Yeah, I guess. I guess, but uh, anyway. So you always find, you always because you were always making jokes about hookers, and you were always. Oh, it's part of the loser thing because the only way you could get sex would be to pay for it. You know, so, favorite part of sex is sneaking out without pain. Yes, uh, you used to go over to Oakland, knock on doors, and say, <laughs> "Are you open? <laughs> I have cash." <laughs> You know, that's the funny part about it. People can do something as comedy, and then all... Huh? People still, to this day, they will send me hooker jokes. That this, you know, like the, My hooker charges extra because she, I give her, quote, the creeps. <laughs> Have you used that? <laughs> I, probably. <laughs> Did somebody actually send you that joke? Yeah. That's a great uh, joke. All, all the time, yeah. And then... Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I guess uh, you know. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else you used to find funny. I used to do. Uh, I used to have a couple of abortion jokes, and now with the Supreme Court thing, that those might come back. So. What, the abortion jokes? Yeah. Oh, they might come back. Yeah. Oh well, what were the jokes? Uh, are you? Uh, are you pro-abortion? I'm not a pro, but I'm pretty good with a coat hanger. <laughs> and then, are you for abortion? Yeah, it's a lot cheaper than child support. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want you... I, I, would those jokes be coming back, or would you have problems still? Well, yeah, probably, I just think, the way society is now, uh, there's certain words, whether you're for, if you did a joke for abortion or against abortion, just saying the word abortion is going to set the crowd off and, in a bad way. So. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, people. Because, uh, well, yeah, I guess maybe your abortion jokes wouldn't work because right now, because of the whole Supreme Court thing. Uh, or the possible Supreme Court thing. They have not issued the ruling yet. Um, uh, it, it, it no longer is kind of funny 
it's kind of very serious, you know. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and you know, like it's fine. You and I live in uh, you live in California. I live in New York. If somebody we know wants to get an abortion, they simply go down the street, right? Mm-hmm. But if they're in Texas, they can't get one in Texas, and they can't get one in Oklahoma, and maybe they can't afford to travel to California, to New York, to Oregon, to Washington, or whatever. And that's the problem. Was well, that, a bunch of companies are saying now they will fly people to California or New York. Y- yeah, good, good, because that's what I was suggesting is that we raise money just for plane tickets. Yeah, there's uh, there's about eight companies so far that have announced they'd do that, Lyft, uh, Amazon. Oh, really? I yeah. didn't know that. See, I don't follow yeah. the news that closely every day. You know, I was going to say one of the airlines might do it if their flights don't get aborted. <laughs> well, there's the joke there. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or the or more flights will be crashing because they're not allowed to be aborted. <laughs> well, they can fly people out to California, get an abortion, and go to Disneyland, make a week of it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here comes the birth of comedy, ladies and gentlemen. The birth of the <laughs> Your jokes. Your fetus has to be this high to write. <laughs> <laughs> Joke doctors in. Yeah. We used to do that in your show. Joke doctors in. <laughs> you know, the only way the only way you're going to be able to get an abortion in Texas right now is if you get, you're pregnant and you ride a ride at Great uh, Great American, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, you know some states. Some states. This is this is really bizarre. Some states. Let's say we're in a state where you can't get an abortion. Okay, it's illegal. Okay, so you decide to go to California and get an abortion. Some of those states are saying they can charge you with a crime for doing that. Uh, I would doubt that would hold up in the courts, would it? Well, with this court, come on, you know. Uh, I, I think we we've got a problem with the Supreme Court, really do, you know. It went, in the day where you felt they were not necessarily impartial, but that they were open to an argument, okay. You yeah, don't, well, you, don't, you don't have that anymore, you know. I've always felt the Supreme Court was uh, for nine unelected people. That's a, a lot of power. But probably the most power in the country. More than any, yeah, the legislature, certainly, yeah. They're going to they, be uh, here long after a president is gone. You know, they've gone through many presidents. How many presidents have some of these people gone through? Ruth Bader Ginsburg, how many presidents did she go through? Yeah. There, you know? There's been talk about having term limits on Supreme Court, Supreme Court justices. That's, that's, uh, yeah, I don't think it's a great system. But Well, I mean, we should impeach more of them. That's what we should do. That's how you can get them out, by the way, is impeaching them. The only way you get him out, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Clarence Thomas recently has had a lot of flack about his wife and and maybe how he assisted her in some of the things she did with Trump. Uh, and I think they should go for impeachment on uh, on Clarence Thomas. You know, of course, it would probably be overthrown by the Supreme Court. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, what the hell? We can try. Well, Roe v. Wade, do you know who uh, Wade was? Um, uh, w- uh, Wade, let me think about this. Was he a politician? Uh, no. Well, kind of. Kind he of. Was a, he was a district attorney. Oh, really? He was a district attorney in Dallas who was getting ready to file the murder charges against Lee Harvey Oswald. Really? Yeah. Son of a bitch! I didn't know that. And he what he he was involved in that case in uh, not allowing her to have an abortion or something. Yeah, the, that case was brought in Texas, and he was the district attorney in Dallas. Wow. Okay. See, folks, didn't I tell you he was brilliant? Didn't brilliant. I, didn't I tell you that he was he was the mind of an age, ladies and gentlemen? This guy has more trivial information than any human being on the planet. I think he had he had an ama- he was really a tough guy. He had an amazing record for getting people the death penalty and really tough. And Wait a minute, the death penalty in Texas? Who would have thought? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
you know. I mean, it, what happened is it's almost impossible. If you get the death penalty in Texas, it's almost impossible to get it overturned because uh, the, the uh, appeals board has a tendency to never say, you know, okay, you, you, can, you can go. Um, and the, the problem they had is years ago, they had a, a governor by the name of Ma Ferguson. It was a woman. And Ma Ferguson was a very corrupt governor. By the way, we talk about women, you know, and we talk about why are there not enough women in politics. And here you had a woman who was a governor of a state, and she was corrupt as hell. If you wanted something passed, you just greased her palm, and she would do it. And they were so sick of that. After she got out of office, they passed laws making it impossible for the governor to have any real power in Texas. I know that sounds weird because this guy's do, doing all this stuff now, but they they tried to limit the power the governor had. And so, therefore, the, the ability of the governor to pardon somebody if they've been given the death penalty, he can't pardon anybody. Um, because she was like letting people go that she knew personally. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so that uh, that's the reason. See, see, I know some things, too. Um, that's the reason why you 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 have such a, a bad situation in Texas when it comes to the death penalty. Other states you have better appeals routes that you can take. But anyway, so he did this little comedy show the other night, and Len thought you were terrific, you know. Well. And I said, did you expect anything else? You know, <laughs> I mean, this is a funny, funny guy. Well, comedy can always go bad. You never know. Well, I don't. You know, I you keep you keep writing new jokes, right? I try. Yeah. In other words, most comedians are happy when they finally have what twenty minutes. If you're headlining, it probably you want an hour, forty-five. Or, yeah, but 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 so. when you're starting out, you want to get a tight twenty, right? You want to get a good twenty, and then you try to get a TV show. Back when when that was. Doable, but. Yeah, but then then you go to uh, you go to uh, you you do a tight uh, tight twenty, then you go to a tw tight forty, which would make you a headliner. Yeah, right. I think he needed at least forty to be a headliner, but sixty was considered ideal. You're right. Uh huh. Although you know, when I was doing comedy shows, uh, I never had anybody do a set that was longer than. I think 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And that was perfect because uh, that's, you don't want to go too long. Well, my I mean, feeling was I used to have five comics on every show. Yeah. And we, normally there are three. You know, there's a, you have an opener, okay? You have the a middle, middle act. And the headline. And the headline. a tired old format that's been around for a half a century. Well, well I killed that format. Yeah, because what happened was I one day I was doing this uh, one of these shows. We were doing the lineup, and uh, uh, Warren Thomas comes over to me and says, uh, "Why am I opening? Uh, am I that bad?" And I went, "No." On an, an Alex Bennett comedy show, the second funniest person goes on first. And he said, "Why?" Because, you know, it's usually least funny is the th third act. It's the opening act, and, which is the hardest thing to do. And it's which also is, usually it's, the MC as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then you do the middle act, and then you do the, the, you do the best act last. I said, no, I put the second best act first. I bury the worst act in the middle. Okay. And, and that was perfect. And and uh, that was my philosophy. I think I'm still the only person who had that philosophy and, and did it. Nobody else, most everybody else always thought, well, we take the weakest person, put them on first, and blah, 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 blah. And no, you want to put on, you want to put on the second strongest. You got to put somebody person. strong. I, opening, opening with a bad act is a, ho a horrible idea. So to, so to bury the least funny, although I think everybody I hired was funny, but to hire the least funny... Mm -hmm. And put him in the middle makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because he can he has a, a better chance of survival there, and 
he can bomb if you want him to because the next act coming on is going to be the third funniest person in the group. And then you have the headliner. If the first act is not good, the audience is starting to think, eh, we made a mistake. You, of course. Of course. And I don't... A lot of people used to think that if you put on a really good act first that it made it hard for the headliner. And I, I never found that to be true. All my comedy no. shows work pretty well. You know? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, so, uh, you know, I don't know where I put you. Did I always put you third? <laughs> Uh, tech. <laughs> no. Uh, usually, didn't you open for me on a lot of occasions? No, because I was too low energy. That you had, you, had, you usually had yeah. Kravitz than me. Yeah, yeah. You would usually be the second guy. Yeah. Or the fourth. Yeah, I remember or Kravitz was complaining. That, I remember you telling him the same thing. That uh, yeah, no, it's, it's not like an MC at a club. This is you going up because you're good. Yeah, but I don't think anybody does that. You know, they still, they always put a second act first. Right, know. yeah, it's, it's horrible. Like, uh, you know, um, when you were with Norm MacDonald, you probably should have been the last guy on. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Is, is it harder out there, though? I mean, in this very, what they call, woke era. I hate that term. Yeah, it's uh, you just got to be so careful. About Everybody's offended about everything. So I mean, do you get booed at all? I haven't for a, no, but yeah. But in this day and age, I mean, you know, you say you say something that's not right. I'm sorry, comedy is not political, politically correct, and if it is, it's not funny. Exactly. Right. I mean, I mean, I wonder what people are like. Dave, what's David Tell doing for an act now? You know. I saw him a couple of months ago. He hasn't he hasn't cut back at all. So and he's got his own crowd. And they were, he was killing. Yeah. Okay. Bobby Slayton feels he can't work anywhere. You know. Yeah, Bobby. I think would. Uh, <laughs> I college kids would see his act. I think their heads would pop off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You think that what happened to Dave Chappelle was terrible? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just, I just feel that certain professions, certain uh, talents, are being abridged because of all this, this political correctness. Oh, for sure. You know, I mean, I just hate. I hate to see it. I hate to see it. I mean, how would we mentioned we talked about this last time slightly? But how would have Lenny Bruce survived today? How would he? have played in this atmosphere. Yeah, at least uh, well, he actually got arrested, so maybe it's not as bad as we think, but it's still not fun. It, you know? it could be a lot worse, yeah. 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 Well, he, he, did get a, he did get arrested, and eventually, I mean, it would, yes, he took heroin and killed him, okay? Although they claim now that L.A. police got him a bad batch and made sure he'd overdose. That's that's the profound prevailing. I had theory. heard that, yeah. So. Yeah, but uh, the fact is that that uh, you know all the that years of being on on trial took its toll on him. I don't know if you ever saw one of the last sets he did. They have it as a film, and all he did was go on stage and read from his uh, uh, from the transcripts of his trials. You know, I mean, he was just so obsessed by it. It just ruined, it sucked all the comedy out of him. Terrible. Just terrible. I know. And when I was a kid, he was my favorite comic. Really? Yes. I saw him perform live. Really? So I'm at Where? The, at the Masonic Auditorium. And um, I remember watching him and people walking out. Because they didn't like what he had to say. I think he was doing something about gay people at that point. Okay. <laughs> you know? And and uh, uh, I was a, uh, I loved him. I thought he was just terrific. Well, that uh, that must have been fun to see him live. But it's yeah. amazing that you saw him at the Masonic, and then years later you do your own show at the Masonic. Yep, yep. I didn't stop to think about that when I was working the Masonic, but uh, you're right. You're right. You know. But uh, he was, I thought he was brilliant. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. And there was, a, there was something he did that nobody else understood completely. 
when they were watching him. But he was like a jazz musician. There was a rhythm to his comedy. I, I, I don't know how much Bruce you've listened to, but next time you listen to him, listen to okay. the rhythm. It's almost a jazz scatting kind of rhythm. And uh, I always enjoyed that rhythm. I always enjoyed the way he 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 phrased something and made it musical. I, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if this makes sense, you know, but... No, it does. I'll have to listen to him. I think uh, Attell kind of has that uh, rhythm, too. That... Yeah, well, everybody who ever came along after Bruce, everybody went, you know, he's the next Lenny Bruce. And I'm going, I'm sorry. You know, he is not the next Lenny Bruce just because he told a dirty joke or something. That's a, yeah, they always say, I did a dirty joke. I'm like Lenny. Yeah, yeah. and then... Uh, along comes a guy who I finally said, okay, if you want to say he could be the next Lenny Bruce, uh, this guy's it. And that was Bill Hicks. Yeah. The long, now dead Bill Hicks. Um, he died at 32 of pancreatic cancer. Who could have 20, thought? Anyway. 28 years ago. Is that is that how long ago it was? Mm-hmm. And uh, because one of the saddest things I ever heard, I was I saw him backstage at the uh, punchline. I walked into the dressing room, and I said, "Hi," because you know, we're friends. Uh, h- how you doing? He says, uh, "I'm quitting comedy." And I said, "You're quitting? You you are quitting comedy? You're brilliant. You're one of the be- greatest voices of our of comedy these days." And he went, "Yeah, I'm just quitting. I'm." time for me to give it up <laughs> and I didn't realize what he was trying to tell me was I'm dying wow yeah because uh, six months later he was dead uh, he went quick yeah yeah he knew he had uh, this disease and he went home to Texas and he spent what time he had left with his mother and uh, then he died you know. four, four months after his letterman appearance got scratched that's right that's right uh, and I remember uh, tell the story off, and I called up my friend Shecky at the Letterman show when I heard. I can't remember how I heard. I think maybe I was at Caroline's or something, or went into Caroline's during the day. I can't remember what, how I found out that Bill Hicks had died. And so I called my friend Shecky and I over at the Letterman show, and I said, "Did you hear about Bill Hicks?" And he says, "What did he do now?" <laughs> okay. And my answer was, "He died." And there was silence on the other end of the phone. And for years, Letterman felt completely guilty about what went on with with Bill. Because in case people don't know, Bill Hicks did the the Letterman show. And he did his set. And they said, this is terrific. This is great. It was during like the first couple of weeks that Letterman was on CBS. Yeah, it was like the first month, I think. And he went back to the hotel, and everybody was patting him on the back as he left. And he went, well, I finally did the set that people will totally understand what I'm about. Okay? And he gets a call then from, uh, uh, I think, Bob Morton, who was the producer at the time. He said, we're not going to run your your set. Uh, Dave feels it's too it's too edgy for us to to do at this point. And it was at the very beginning where he didn't want any problems with CVS. Mm-hmm. And they canceled it. What they did is they ran a, not a comedian, but an interview that Dave did in one of the pilot shows they did like a couple of weeks before they did the new Letterman show. They spent weeks doing the new Letterman show. But with like, you know, they bring in a, they're one of their, their writers or something to sit there and interview them as a test. And they had that still in the can, so they used one of those. It was very sad. Very yeah. sad. He was very despondent about it. I talked to him the next day about it on the air, and he said, I just don't know what happened. You know, He said it was a perfect set. And later on, years later, after his death, Dave had his mom on and ran that set, ran right. the tape of that set. And it was a great set, and uh, uh, there was nothing wrong with it. And Dave profusely apologized to his mother. A lot of guilt. (laughs) A lot, really, a lot of guilt. Uh, And and uh, you know, but it was it. It's one of the saddest stories I think in comedy because this was a great voice in comedy. 
And if people have a chance, go on YouTube. You can find Bill, a lot of Bill Hicks there mm -hmm. uh, and see what this guy did for a living. Hey, listen, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. We don't always talk about comedy, but in this case, uh, the last couple of times we had, we to. had, we had <laughs> to because we had one of our own get beaten up or <laughs> attacked on stage. Yes, Dave and we will not tolerate that. We will not tolerate. This will not go unchallenged. <laughs> hey, listen, it's great talking to you, Bubbles. Always great yeah. talking to you. Larry Bubbles Brown, talk to you next week. You got it. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you, Bubbles. Uh, we always have Bubbles on. Usually it's Friday, and sometimes it's on, well, next week it'll probably be uh, 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 Wednesday, I think. I don't know. If I do a show Wednesday, I don't know. Well, we had so few people watching this show yesterday. It was the lowest we've ever been, and I'm just beginning to wonder. I keep saying this over and over again. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I'm really thinking about uh, figuring out a new way to do this or finding a new uh, amount of shows we do a week or not doing it at all. Okay? All right. But anyway. Listen, uh, well, let me, uh, let me just go to the one person who's here. You see, that's the other thing. We start off the show, we have like one person, and in this case, that must be a pretty good person, uh, somebody we look forward to having on here. Uh, but uh, there we go. Uh, let me see here. Let me bring up uh, uh, Josh Wheeler. There he is, folks. Hello, Josh. How are you this uh, evening? Good. How you doing? Yeah, well, it's just you and me. Oh, well. You know, we'll make it work. Yeah, we'll make it work, you know. And to the rest of you, there we go. Thanks to that, right? It's a simple, simple thing to say, right? Clear uh, enough. So what's new in your life? Well, nothing new. Oh, okay. Nothing well, new. thank you. Same. Good having you on this evening. We'll see yes, you later. Yeah. It's routine, <laughs> busy, that's all. It's routine, busy, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Anything in the in the news that's been floating your boat? Well, I don't think nothing. You know, uh, last few days, I don't think it's been pretty steady. The last few days with the same stuff. Uh, yeah. You know, still got a lot of stuff out there from a week and a half or so ago. Yeah. Yeah. You know, with uh, uproar with the courts and all that kind of stuff, but. Uh, yeah. Last few days, everything's been fairly quiet. Yeah. Floating your boat. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, there's. A, I don't think. There's don't think, there's no. Jeff getting audio from the browser. Here's what you do. I I got an answer for you on this one, Jeff. Can you hear me, Jeff? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Before you come on, just stop your browser. Yeah. Yeah. Just stop the browser. You know. Okay. That's okay. the b best way to do it. Either that or I don't know what you're using, but you can also go up to the tab and say mute. And you can keep it on mute so that next time you sign on, it's muting itself. You know. So. Huh. Anyway, that's just, you know, because you seem to have right. a little problem with that because you don't think, hey, I'm watching the browser because I want to see when he's ready to take calls. Uh, but you can see because I'll bring somebody on and all of a sudden you can visually, that's your vis visual cue, as it were. No, but uh, anyway, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was just saying, yeah, I mean, we've still got, you know, a lot we could talk about with, uh, you know, the issues with the court. And uh, I, I saw a story, I think, I don't know, maybe it was yesterday that uh, a couple of the people who organized the labor union movement mm -hmm. at Amazon <laughs> were fired, which I don't really understand how they're going to try to sneak that by without almost certainly being sued. But. I don't know. I, I mean, I guess I didn't check into it a lot. It just, you know. Uh, the, these mind. are the people in the uh, the Amazon that didn't go for the union, right? I, you know what? It, I don't. It didn't. <clears throat> I didn't read that much into it that it even said. I just saw the headline that said, you know, the two original union organizers at an Amazon facility were fired. I thought after the facility did unionize, maybe. I need well, to, no. There's one that, I mean, the one uh, in uh, uh, Long no. Island City. 
unionized. Okay. The one out in, I can't remember where the other place is, in the New York area, or out in Brooklyn or something like that, voted not to unionize. And I don't think they would try to fire somebody from the one that got unionized because that would really be going against Hart Taft-Hartley. Taft Hartley. Well, the, the, the AP headline said, Amazon fires two union organizers tied to first U.S. labor win. Amazon oh, fires really? two with ties to the grassroots union that led to the first successful U.S. organizing effort in the retail giant's history. Well, they're not going to get away claims, with that. They're not going to get away with that. It, it, as in Amazon, claims the cases are unrelated to each other and are not connected to any cause or group the two support. I mean, I just... But okay. isn't, well, it's kind of suspicious that it's, what, the two people that were the main force behind getting the union It sounds in like it. I mean, I, I don't... I mean... Of course, of Perhaps course, they're going to say it's they, not associated with that. You know, uh, we yeah. got rid of them because uh, we didn't like the way they right. smelled when they came I mean, to look, work. You know, maybe they've said, "Yeah, we're we're going to fire them, and then they're going to sue us, and we're going to give them some money, and that's the cost of making it." You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. I, I'm just saying, if they gave each of them a, if they get a hundred million dollar judgment. I mean, what? I mean, Amazon's not, they're not going to shed any tears over it or anything, right? right. I mean, they're not going to file for. Any form of well, bankruptcy. You know, I that. look, let's say these people were terrible people. Let's say they were they were goosing women in the parking lot, okay? Uh, to get rid of them looks suspicious. So you just don't do it. You know. That uh, yeah. you know, I don't think they're gonna survive that. Yeah, I, I don't know how that's going to go over. I mean, well, you have a thing called Taft Hartley, and you have laws about people who want to form a union, and that reprisals right. can't be taken against people who vote for a union or that organize that. Right. Uh, so I don't see how this is going to play. And if they say, well, it's not because they formed the union, there. Well, what else is it? Okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. Unless they did something completely egregious. Yeah, but that's, you know, uh, you know, here, you know, what you've got there is a company that really sucks. And every day that I order from them, I get to feel guiltier and guiltier, only I can't buy stuff that I want anywhere else. And that's the problem. Uh, yeah. And I hate Jeff Bezos and I hate what he represents. And everybody sits around saying nasty things about um, uh, Elon Musk. But I was saying this to Marjorie today. She, he's decided maybe he isn't going to buy Twitter, which I think is a good idea not to buy Twitter because I don't think it's worth what, what he's paying for it, okay? But the point is that she's always saying, I'm glad he didn't buy that. I don't mind him because he was going to let Trump back on it. And I, I had to tell her, look, Trump runs two major companies in this country. He runs uh, Tesla and he runs um, uh, SpaceX, owns both of them. And my point is, do you ever hear anything bad about people who work at Tesla? He doesn't own both of them. Well, he, it's not a question of owning them, but I mean, he is. They're, they're publicly held companies. They're public, at this point, they're publicly held companies. <laughs> right. They weren't in the beginning. I don't know if SpaceX is publicly held, to tell you the damn truth. Uh, well, if you don't know, why did you say it was? Well, because I think it is. You but think it is? I, I will look it up. Look it up. It. Look it up. I mean, Tesla, I think, is a publicly traded company because I saw it on the stock exchange today. But uh, the point I'm making is, is that you never hear bad things about the companies he runs. How's that? Did I just correct myself enough for you? Um, uh, he... Uh, he, he, you know, you never hear anything really bad about it. I, I saw a thing on, uh, on YouTube said, here are the things you can't do. Uh, here, here's the things that you can't uh, do uh, if you work for Elon Musk. And then all the things they listed were good things. Like if you're in a meeting and you find it boring, you're allowed to get up and walk out, you know. He said, and he said, you better have a good reason, because if I ask you, I want to know why, you know. But 
you know, there's no reason for you to stick around at a meeting in which you feel you have no input or anything important that you have to do, that you just got to be there because it was an all hands on meeting. He said, I don't want those. That's a waste of time. That's what is um, publicly held yeah. and uh, SpaceX is not. Yeah. Okay. So, right. so yes. Uh, I know, I know Tesla's on the, you know. I own Tesla stock, so I do know that. But yeah, yeah. I thought I thought that the other company was. How do you feel about the fact it went down thirty percent? I don't care. I bought it real cheap. I bought it early on. Yeah, yeah. It'll well, go back up. You know, it's it's uh, but it, uh, and Twitter stock went up and then it went down and went up and went down based on him doing what he's doing now, which you know. Yeah. Who knows why why he's doing that, but. Maybe he sees an advantage to it, you know. Anyway, hello, Charlie. How you doing? What? Your so microphone Tesla, isn't on. Tesla, Tesla. Charlie, oh. you're, you're blocked. Oh, Tesla he's talking. He's phone. talking to somebody. Tesla stock did not go down today. It went up forty-one dollars and some change. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Seven hundred and sixty-eight. They don't say forty-one dollars, though. They say forty-one points. No, they. Well, I invest. It, 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 it technically it is dollars because if you cashed it in, you would get forty one dollars more today than you would have yesterday. But that's the correct. term they use is points. Yeah, that's correct. I know because I make the same mistake. So I have something here. I have something very rare. Okay, you can't buy one of these to save your life unless you want to pay a lot of money. Uh, an Alex Bennett testicle. No, no. There, here oh, no. And, and, and an iPod. The iPod. Well, they did away with finally with the iPod Touch, which was the last iteration of this. Right. And they're not going to be making iPods any longer. However, I don't know. They still say on an iPhone that that's iPod, that function they have for playing music. I don't think so. No. But. Um, this is this thing was particularly good. This was the last iPod they made, and it really is speedy and fast, and uh, the uh, uh, you know the music looks good. And the menu got so the, the iPod menu Touch is still available, starting at one ninety nine. No, it's not. It looks, no, it's it not. Like you a, can't find it. You cannot oh, I, well, find. Well, that it. might be true, but I I can I can hit the buy button. I'm on Apple, so. Site, uh, they, they supposedly don't have any left in stock. Oh, well, that might be true. I don't know. No, it is true. Oh, I believe you. Yeah. So you're wrong twice today. But, well, you know, it happens. You know, I'm not, I'm not Phil. I'm not always right. So, um, yeah, but it seems like you're, uh, you're two thirds of the time wrong. And never mind. I won't say it. So, what? Well, you won't so, say what? Um, Actually, I can buy it right now. They're they're offering it, including Apple Care for fifty nine dollars. Well, so all I, I know is that according to the uh, according to the sources I have, if you try to buy it, it isn't available. Well, I'm not going to go through all that. So, uh, okay, we'll take your. Well, go buy one. Uh, the iPod's dead, but not the iPod Touch. The iPod you're, Touch you're... supposedly, when people went online or even went to Apple stores and tried to buy it, they couldn't get it. Oh, okay. I don't know. That's the iPod itself is dead. You can buy them used for thirteen hundred dollars on up is what it says. Really? Here. This yeah. is worth thirteen hundred bucks now? And probably cost eight hundred new. No. New it was it uh new? no. New this was around two hundred, I can't remember. Somewhere around two hundred. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that. Maybe a hundred and forty nine. Huh? When did you buy it? I bought it. Uh, <clears throat> no, that I can't tell you. But I do know this is like I think the last iteration of it because you see it has a, it has all the gra graphics and stuff on it, which the earlier ones didn't have. And I gave one of my early ones to to Shecky because he wanted it. So, that, cool. you know, what a nice guy you are. Yeah. Well, no, I mean he uh, he he he. What happened was he had one. And it went bad on them. And yeah. I just had one of the old ones, so I said, hey, I've got two of them. I got this one, which was brand new, and then, then the other one, and I, I well, gave Well, since you gave them the other one, now that pays for the door handle you broke. I guess. <laughs> you know. I don't know. Uh, let's see. The 
the first generation had 10 gigabytes. Yeah, this is uh, this is this is 150, I think, or 160, something like that. I can't remember. Gigabyte. Yeah, it's. Uh, oh, that is the the sixth generation started with 160. Yeah, it's 160 gigabytes. Two, so right 2007 model. Yeah. Introduced September 5th, mm -hmm. 2007. So this is 160. Right. So, uh, it, and that's the one that that's worth fifteen hundred bucks. Thirteen hundred. Thirteen hundred. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll try and sell it. What the hell? Maybe that's what it says. It, that they're going for on eBay. So the iPod Touch is, they're they're they slowed down production apparently according to the article I'm reading right now in the New York Times, uh, for the Touch because mm -hmm. it uses the same chip as the iPhone and they make a lot more money with the iPhone. So, well, that's that's the reason why. But if you go to uh, Mac Rumors, they will have all the information. There I, I like them. It. Mac Rumors is yeah. Well, Mac okay. Rumors is oh. saying. Uh, but, I'm not in the market for one of them. My iPhone works like that. And oh boy, so. there we go. I'm sorry, we just froze up there for a moment because for some reason, my. But uh, anyway, it's 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 just I don't I don't want to get into an argument with you. I got other things to do with my wife, like get the show over with. Uh, yeah, if, anyway, if you sold it, you could probably pay for three months' rent there. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Hello, yeah. Kevin. How are you? Okay, how you doing, Alex? I'm doing fine. Good. Uh, um, and um, so, um, anyway, th th this is uh, this is going the way of the dodo. I mean, this went the way of the dodo a long time ago, uh, huh. but it uh, it uh, you know I I guess it, I guess you know why that why I think they're worth so much is that people buy these things as like you know mementos and souvenirs and things like that because. Really, I mean, this holds more music than that one does. This is a guy. I've got 256k uh, gig gigabytes of memory in this thing, so you know, I could I could put a lot of music on that. Yeah, your whole everything you ever did. Well, I, everything I have, every every piece of music I have is on this one. Wow, that's great. You know. So. <laughs> kinds of music on this thing yeah. well what i'm saying what do you what yeah, do you got so, there is that an iphone iphone yeah 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 i mean that thing is it depends on what size you bought i put 256 in mine because i do video with it and i like to have the room to do enough video mine's a mini 12 and it holds 512 gigabytes why'd you get a mini yeah uh, because i like the smaller phone really I don't want to be carrying. I'm thinking of going to the like biggest. I'm thinking of going to the biggest phone they have. I just, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it makes me. The older I get, the bigger the screen I need. <laughs> it's true. Isn't it's that true. true? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, let's get back to the Supreme Court again for a quick second here. Uh, I don't want to dwell on it because I'm beginning to think every time I tune into uh, MSNBC or CNN. They're wailing away at least once an hour for one of their segments about, you know, what's going to happen. Oh boy, it's uh, all hell's going to break loose, when we, and then they're going to do away with uh, with uh, bl you know blacks getting them being able to marry whites and things like that. And the the decision hasn't even been handed down. You know, and I think that they're you know they're they're ginning this thing up beyond all measure. Um, I mean, there is a possibility, is it not here? Uh, because that was only one decision that got released that maybe Roe versus Wade won't be overturned? It was a draft. Huh? It was a draft. Opinion. It was a draft. You know, so why are we suddenly getting apoplectic? I mean, yeah, get ready because there's going to be a decision somehow, but get ready in case it's negative. But don't, you know, don't spend a I, half hour out of every hour discussing this thing. Personally, I was thinking about, wonder if it was an experiment. Oh, I wonder um, if they released it to see what would happen. To, to put their toe in the water, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. You know, it's, a, it's, an, it's an opinion. It's a draft. 
let's 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 release it and see what the hell happens and see all the idiots get well stupid. what i love is this moron alito is quoting like 14th century yeah. law uh, whatever i mean it's still it's it's a draft it's not a it's not a decision mm -hmm. and they could have just stuck it out there to see where the idiots are going to come out of the woodwork and how many of them are going to come out of the woodwork i know it's probably a stupid you know, thought, but you know, you never know with the way things have been going the last five or six years. What, 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 uh, Josh? What was this 14th century uh, decision he quoted? Well, I don't know if it was a decision. I mean, I, it, I mean, it certainly wasn't American law. You know. Well, I mean, I, I think that he made no, it wasn't. But I mean, he made some reference to you know some ancient philosophers and things of that nature which is not uncommon for you know a court decision but i would say that i mean i would say that that's two or three lines in a 90 page opinion that is put in there to help illustrate a point or an analogy or something mm -hmm. along those lines and that's that's done commonly in opinions opinions often they're they're sort of written like but you would how is, how is 14th century england uh have any re relationship to today well it, you know it does because the point that he is illustrating there is he's trying to trace back you know precedent through american law and american history but he's tracing it back as far as he can go and one mm -hmm. of the things that the court looks to and that the framers looked to was what at the time would have been referred to as the common law mm -hmm. you know so they looked at natural law which was set down by a lot of ancient philosophers you know we we still mm -hmm. you know we still live by a code of philosophical laws and and things like that i mean i mean who decided you know murder was something that was inappropriate and those sort of things those things come from you know uh the works of Locke and others and and, and you know those are things that the framers were very into at the time they were very into philosophy so his point there is that our framers who wrote our constitution were were very studied people in ancient ancient philosophy and the common law and the, the common law that they were interested in was the common law from their mother country which was you know at the time the you know kingdom of england mm -hmm. what we call now great britain and you know the territories that that kingdom of britain you know reigned over so you know his point that he illustrated was that in 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 the common law and then in american law once we transition from common law to our own written law mm -hmm. that we decided on in his opinion he did not see a demonstrated historical acceptance of abortion so you you can argue the point whether or not you interpret it that way that's fine that's besides the point i'm just illustrating what what he did by quoting someone you know that you might think is irrelevant but i mean i don't think it's irrelevant those opinions are often written very much the same mm -hmm. as you would see a, a history you know term paper in a in a college class or a graduate class or something like that that same style that same form footnotes and all that so i mean that that's mm -hmm. just something thrown in there to help charlie has his hand bolster up. his case charlie you know, I, I just wanted to ask Josh one thing. Uh, how come nobody is mentioning the 13th Amendment and the involuntary servitude? That is, that is deliberately, explicitly stated in the 13th Amendment that you cannot be forced to serve somebody against your will. Well, I, I think no one is mentioning it because I don't think that it's, I don't think that it applies here or that it's relevant. I mean. Well, how is a woman not being you, forced to serve the fetus? If you took, for example, if you took the original decision of Roe v. Wade, Roe v. Wade still did not allow 
I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it did not allow states to to have. I'm sorry. So let me explain it. Under Roe v. Wade, states were still allowed to ban what they called late term third trimester abortions. Okay. The court at that time said we're going to divide it into thirds. Okay, first trimester, second, third. In the third trimester, all bets are off. States can allow it or they can disallow it. And if they disallow it, we have deemed it to be legal and appropriate. So at what point then would the 13th Amendment apply? Would it apply the day before the third trimester, but not the day after? It would apply at any point because the the day a baby is born, the 13th Amendment applies. Well, but but I'm what I'm saying is but that doesn't make sense if 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 the original ruling that everyone is in love with said you can ban it in the third trimester that court didn't say the 13th amendment applies here we can't make that rule they no, said it doesn't as far as i can tell the 13th amendment was never even brought up during roe v wade and i don't understand why not okay see well, i mean that, i kind that's of that's fine yeah. if if you're if you feel that way that's fine but that's different than saying well, they can't overturn it because of the 13th Amendment, because the original court didn't apply it. The Casey court didn't apply it. No federal court has ever applied it. I'm just saying that's that's to me, that argument doesn't. I mean, it's just not nobody ever applied it. They, they, they were able to get the see. The, I uh, mean, in all in all respect to you, uh, Charlie, I don't understand what you're trying to get at here, because I don't know. I don't, let me put it this way. I don't know that that has anything to do with involuntary servitude. It, it does, it, because you're making her give up her uterus for nine months, and she might die in the process. There's no guarantee that she won't. Well, look, we, I, those arguments make a lot of sense about death and so on, but uh, I, and I, I could be completely wrong here. I just don't see the argument that it's that it's a uh, uh, involuntary servitude well, question. No, I mean the. Well, it's look, obviously involuntary. She doesn't want to be pregnant. Well, but did she voluntarily? I mean, uh, did she voluntarily <laughs> have sex? That right. has nothing to do with it because I can voluntarily let you in my house, but that doesn't mean I can't change my mind and say get out of my house and you have to go. Well, but in nature, in nature, uh, pro uh, procreation. It exists because really it, that's how babies are made, okay? But we now live in a society where we can prevent that sort of thing. We have birth control pills and, you know, we have abortion. Uh, so so the, 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 the stakes change. But what I'm saying is, is that, it, you know, I, it just, it doesn't seem to me that involuntary servitude is a good answer to this. I think the fact that women should have the right over what they do with their bodies, period. That's why I that's, that's give you that right. Well, I don't because th you don't you can't be made to serve somebody else because you can control your own body. That's but who why are, even but if who you're are, dead, wait a minute, but who you are you serving? Who, who, who exactly are you serving? You're serving the fetus if you're a pregnant woman and you don't want to be pregnant. If I need your blood mm. to live. I'm going to die if I don't have your blood. I can't take your blood. How, how, how do you, uh, the rest of you feel about this? Um, Kevin? Alan? Jeff? Josh? No, I mean, look, I'm, I'm just, I mean, there's ways that you can approach your thinking to the coming, <clears throat> you know, or the issue here. But to me, that, that amendment doesn't apply. And one of the things that the a court would look at that any legal scholar is going to look at is when that amendment was written and when that amendment was ratified what was the intent of the people who wrote it of the people who ratified it and how did they why they were still alive apply it talk about it argue about it use it etc and i think that in any case whatsoever that if the people were alive that wrote it and an abortion case came up at that time, the folks that wrote that amendment would say, in my opinion, as someone who has looked into this, they would say, absolutely not. That is not in any way, in any shape, any form, 
What this well, would this not be? Can't... Would this not be unusual for the court to reverse Roe versus Wade in that that what we're doing here is we are, we've given people a certain freedom, we've given them a certain right, okay, mm -hmm. and now we're taking it away from them. We gave well, it to them, and now fifty years later, we're taking it back. There are definitely, well, yeah. Look, the court does not often change its mind. Anyway, okay, so well, it, it, it usually somewhat... usually respects other courts too, doesn't it? The courts that came before them, that like for instance said Roe versus Wade was okay. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it usually does, yeah. but it's not. That's not a. That's not a law. That's not a rule. I mean, it's not really even a tradition. In many ways, it's just how it normally is because they tend to honor mm -hmm. opinions mostly because you can usually find a majority of a court later mm -hmm. that at least the majority, not all, but the majority will still hold the opinion that the prior court held. And at times, if they don't, will maybe err to that side because it is what is already in place. But it's not, it's not guaranteed. And, you know, this opinion here, for example, makes it clear that the reason that it would go down the road that it is, uh, you know, taking is because it feels, I'm sorry, you're not allowed to say feels, you have to say things. It thinks, Alito thinks that that, that opinion was right from the get-go, from the day that it was issued, that it was wrong, that they had no constitutional right to do it. That, that in his opinion, the court at that time simply looked at the issue and said, we don't really have much constitutional basis here, but this is what we think we should do because this is a big issue and it needs handled and no one has handled it. And here's what we're going to do. Here's our rules. Here's what's happening. And, you know, in his opinion, he thinks that it never should have done that, that it should have just sort of agreed with what he's mm -hmm. saying now and it should have said this is a problem for the people to fix would you agree Which, with me way, that, would you agree with me that it's a little too early to be going crazy over this until we actually see a decision well yeah i mean i've said that last you know week or whatever i think that since that time there's been a lot a lot of misinformation there's been a lot of people who just are not listening to reason over it or facts, there has been a lot of out of proportion fear mongering, and I think a lot of it's out of hand. And lastly, just real quick, it's not it's not a decision. I mean, it's a draft right. opinion. Right. I mean, it doesn't I, 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 I say anyone. Yeah. It doesn't say anyone has signed on to it. What I'm saying I'm is save. Saying what I'm saying. All, what I'm saying is save your energy. You yeah, may need it later. I mean, it's, it's one thing or another, but I'm just saying for all you know, yeah, the current vote, I'm serious, For it is just as possible that the current vote is eight to one and that Alito is the one and that he feels so strongly about it that he said, this is what I want to do. And somebody, the chief justice or somebody said, then show me what it would look like. Yeah. And he said, fine, I will. And when I lose, I'm going to be the guy that writes the famous dissent, you know, because this is what I believe. Well, all, you, you know, know all, all I'm saying, and then I want to go to Charlie because he had his hand up for a while, and I don't yeah. want—I know—I right. know he lost some toes. I don't want him to lose some fingers here. Um, uh, uh, but I mean, uh, it, it's a little too early, I think, to use all your energy because by the time we get to that decision, we will have expended a lot of emotion and energy on it at that point, and the kind of hue and cry that will come about at that point may be minor compared to what's happening actually right now and, and we that, should say that could be another reason why they released it early that's the that could be the experiment yeah yeah uh charlie the, the problem with you saying it's too early to be upset is women in the state of texas have found it impossible to get an abortion since september the first so we've gone nine months nine months without women being able to get abortion yeah, well now that's another story that's another situation that's altogether. texas 
That's I'm Texas. just saying the whole country, now we're going, the whole country's going to be Texas, and women can't I mean, be in the anywhere. Here in New York, I believe Unless we don't even, rich. here in New York, we don't even go for the third trimester. You can have it up to the last day if you want it. And that's the way it should be. Well, but, I, I might disagree with you on that. that one. If you have I mean, made, that's fine that Charlie thinks that. I mean, it, it, it is, because yeah. he's. I just don't understand how you can say that's not servitude. Okay, it's a day before. I understand that. I, I mean, I, I clearly understand that you don't understand that. But it is time for some to accept that there are just as many people, there are many, many citizens of this nation who do not feel that way in any way, shape, or form. They feel just as strongly as you do that any abortion, especially late term you know is ethically wrong morally wrong and i know that's a religious of them, belief i know many of them including myself who have no religious basis for that belief well let me ask you I this mean, charlie let me yeah. ask let me ask charlie something charlie if a yeah. woman decides here in new york the day before she's going to give birth she doesn't want to have the kid and she gets an abortion do you think that's right the day before the kid's born, that's not an abortion. You can just have the you know, C-section or whatever, have the kid be born. The kid's a viable human being and can go live with their life. But you can have an abortion at any time during the term here in New York State. That's, that's fine because as far as I'm concerned, you, you cannot force a woman to give up the, the, her autonomy over her body. You can't force her to do that any more than I can force you to give me your kidney because I'm going to die without your kidney. I agree to you with you in a in a it, 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 for the most part, but not for the whole part. I'm 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 one of these people that says, "Hey, if you haven't made up your mind by the third trimester, then, well, you know, not, shame on you." You know. There's not one woman in the history of the human race that had a third trimester abortion on a whim. Every woman that carried that baby for 6 months is not going to give it up on a whim. Okay, why is she going to give it up? Why is she going to give it up? One of those late-term abortions is because either the mother's going to die or the fetus is inviolable. Yeah, but what I'm saying it. is that, it, you know, if you have a law that allows it at any point, let's say in the first uh, two trimesters, okay, uh, then that's the rule, you know, and, and uh you, you, to say that a woman is necessarily not going to get an abortion because she's not going to do it just on a whim, it, it could very well be that all of a sudden she decides after two months of doing this crap that she doesn't want it anymore. You know, uh, what I'm saying is we're not talking morally, okay? We're talking morally. Uh, I mean, um, I was t talking about this with Marjorie yesterday. I said, me personally, I'm against abortion for me. For somebody I love and somebody who might have my child, I'm against abortion. She has every right to have an abortion. I have no say-so in the matter, and I shouldn't, but I should be allowed to say, hey, don't do it. And if she says I'm going to do it anyway, then I, I can't do anything about that. Uh, but all I'm saying is is that I'm, a, I'm personally against abortion. Uh, and uh, this thing keeps freezing up on me whenever I try to use this thing here okay anyway i'm letting what, jack what, what if, uh, i think it's morally wrong to let a six-year-old die from leukemia because you don't want to donate bone marrow well, no no, no you, wait, 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 wait you're getting you're, yeah but you, you're getting off base here you're getting off base here you're, you're oh, it's controlling your body your it's your bone marrow we can't take it from you without your permission why you get to take the woman's uterus without her permission you're not taking her uterus. It remains yes, it, the uterus. Some women, you understand some women no. do have complications. No, I, I understand all that. And I think that uh, certainly, look, it's not that I don't say you don't have a right to get an abortion. I just, in my case, if I had a woman and she got pregnant and she wanted to have an abortion, I would probably try to talk her out of it. Because, you know, I would have no control over that, but I certainly should have some kind of be able to get my two cents worth in. Don't you agree? Right, but you agree yeah. that it's her her choice. It's her choice, yeah. but you're acting like her uterus is some, oh, I don't know, alien sub, uh, alien. No, well, uh, how, is it, how is it any different from your kidney? 
of your bone marrow. Because my kidney, I can lose one of my, well, I can lose one of my kidneys and I still have the other one, okay? That's what I'm saying, you don't need two. You can live perfectly fine with one, so why don't you save a life? We're gonna, we're gonna step in and say, you don't have a right to control your body. We're gonna take your kidney so this person over here can live. But you're, but you're, you're, you're equating the uterus with an organ, and the it's uterus. An organ. It's an organ like I, a kid. I, I don't think the uterus is an organ. I may be wrong, but I don't think it's considered an organ. If we had Scott Bodica here, he'd look it up for you, Alex. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, we have Alan. Alan can look it up. Yeah. You, know. uh, you looking it up, Alan? I can. <laughs> no, I mean, but I also, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I would. I don't know that I trust a lot of the polling, you know, that I hear and, you know, some of the arguments that, well, you know, seven out of 10 people think this is wrong. Well, then good. Then they shouldn't, then you shouldn't have any problem if this is the case. I believe I don't have, I don't have the right to tell a woman what to do with her body. God I knows, mean, God knows I've tried any number so, of times. But, I, I mean, yeah. there's either two things like either apparently if, if, oh, 72 percent of americans believe that this is wrong well then you evidently didn't ask them how much they care about it because they obviously don't care about it very much because if they did care then this should be the best thing that ever happens because let it roll out and then the people should say yeah no you know what this is not what we want it's time that we well, it was like it. i was gonna, like i was, some I, I was telling oh. phil phil last night you know he doesn't have any right to tell uh, to we, as men, we don't have a right to put our two cents worth in here. This should be an argument <laughs> among the gals, as I as you used to say. Yes, Alan. According to the Cleveland Clinic, the uterus is an organ. It is an organ. Okay, it's officially an organ now, ladies so, and gentlemen. That's but I'm, I'm just saying, right I don't, you know, I don't know that, in my opinion, that you know, especially over something like this that's leaked, that you need to go to the home of justice barrett or anybody else and protest and call her names or anything like that i mean even if this even if this draft that we saw is a is hundred oh i think true. you should call the coney barrett names how many kids does she have six seven i don't know seven kids uh, but i'm uh, just you know but, something leave a few parking spaces for the rest of us okay bitch but i mean my point there is let's let's just concede for the sake of argument that the the draft is true it's a it's a hundred percent it's and all nine justices sign on. I mean, it's a hundred percent. That's the law of the land. It's the way it goes. And everyone's going to be oh, so upset. Oh my God! Look what they did. Look what they did. I mean, yeah, but, why are, but let's you're get, upset with nine people who made a decision yeah. that their other three hundred million of you couldn't make for the last fifty years. Which, by the way, is all the decision actually. I'm sorry. I all the opinion actually says. It, it's very clear in one of the first four or five paragraphs. This issue needs to be returned to the people. We're hitting the reset button, and we're sending it back to the people. Charlie, so, stop blaming these nine it. these nine folks for a problem that yeah. you guys haven't collectively been able to come to agreement on for 50 years. You asked these nine people by proxy to make the decision for you when you couldn't make it for yourselves. But didn't uh, most of the country accept the idea that this was set law? Apparently they didn't because we've been arguing over it for. No, we years. haven't been arguing over it. Yes, we have. All You're right. telling then me maybe, that for maybe 50 we years have, in this maybe. country, the issue of abortion has not been front and center in almost every major and election. And maybe cycle. we didn't argue hard enough with each other. Maybe we uh, uh, Jack, in right. all deference, you are you are many times uh, living in a dream world. Okay, fine. You know, I'll leave it to you, pragmatists. No, I'm saying you're living in a dream world because you're, you're thinking that uh, uh, people are going to rise up against something in this country. This country is not famous for rising up against anything. Well, well maybe it's time we learned like they do in other countries. That if we, that no, if we no, up, you just got to get used want. to the fact that this country sucks. Both for different people. I mean, every year the 535 people that are members of Congress who have the power to fix this problem... Of the 535, you change out about 25 of them, if that. Sometimes not even that many. 
I, I've know, seen that number as low as like ten or something. Like you know, that. I was I, I was mentioning to Marjorie but, tonight you know, that the, I was mentioning to Marjorie tonight that uh, you know, as as I get older, I guess the concerns of seniors in this country become very front and center for me, uh, and I first started to say, well, you know, the Republicans have done nothing for seniors because they've done nothing for anybody that improves people's lives or helps save lives or does anything other than serve their own, I don't know, ridiculous philosophy. And then I said, but what about the Democrats? The Democrats haven't done anything for seniors. What have they done? We die, they don't care. Security. What do you mean? Wait, wait, wait a minute. How long ago was Social Security? Charlie? Well, you asked what they did. They did it. Yeah, but I think the the Republicans also helped with that too, at All the right, time. But, but then you got to say, you know, uh, we did Actually, something about about medical care for those of us who have a certain age, with an imperfect. Medicare is uh, nineteen. What fifty three, fifty four, no, something? No, no fifty five. Yeah. Sixty five. Yeah. Sixty five. Sixty five. Yeah. Sixty yeah. five is Medicare. Yeah, how many years ago is that? Over 50 years. What what have the Democrats done for seniors since then? To begin with, well, they gave us a, they gave us a thing called Medicare in which we got to pay 20% of our uh, of our expenses rather than them taking care of 100%. All right? That's for starters, mm -hmm. putting us therefore at the mercy of insurance companies as they always we are always at the mercy of them anyway. And then they didn't do anything about those insurance companies by, at one point, there was a law. There was just a, a law that said insurance companies could not make a profit. It could not be a profit-making organization. In that time, Congress passed laws that made them, allowed them to earn a profit. And since then, just ask any senior, how, ask, uh, ask uh, Jeff, how much, Jeff, do you pay for your supplemental? You know? Turn your mic on. Yeah, uh, um, yeah I mean, I, I'm not sure how much I pay for it, but you know what? My wife is turning 65. Yeah. And it, it's going to change the cost that she has to pay much more, substantially less. And, and that's because of a Democratic... Well, Strange. no, no, but she's going to pay less because she's she she she's not going to be paying less, believe it or not, because she's going to be paying for a supplemental insurance plan to take care of the other twenty percent. She's already going to be paying, like I am, about two hundred dollars a month for Medicare out of my Social Security. So where is the big bargain here? Well, that's because we well, Americans never compare us and shop what we do with other countries. Well, Again, you know, no. Oh, we never insist on our government comparison shop. Our government won't allow um, uh, 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 the, for instance, they won't allow the, uh, won't allow Medicare. Yeah, to uh, negotiate a price. To negotiate prices. Price. Yeah. But that has nothing to do with comparing what we do with other countries. Yeah. We could insist. Uh, to our representatives that they at least investigate. Well, we and should be allowed to buy uh, buy uh, drugs from Canada, right? Well, you yeah. know why that doesn't happen? Because we have private money from insurance yeah. companies and uh, private money from yeah. drug But have you ever met Canadians? I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. hey, I, listen, man, I worked for a guy that was slightly to the right of Attila the Hun, who was a... Com who, uh, uh, By the way, we don't know that Attila the Hun was to the right of anybody. Well, we right. don't know that he was right That's wing. True. He could That's have been true. left winger so that anybody right. would be well, to the well, left we'll of Attila. Guy. I always hear that everybody's uh, left of Attila the Hun. And I, I, if you can tell me what his politics were, well, this guy did he I vote for Trump? Trump? I don't yeah. know. Oh, well, listen, if this guy had been alive, he, vote, he would have voted for Trump. We worked together for 15, 16 years. And he and I fought every day over these issues. But well, uh, well you didn't have you didn't have to, but I'm sure oh, you well, made I, sure you argued them. Well, well, here, well, here's what I'm now <laughs> here's what I'm now saying at the close of, the, of, of my show: debate and discussion is for politicians. Arguments and fights are for residents, citizens, and voters, and families, and families. Yes. But look, this guy, although he was still a Canadian. Mm -hmm. 
uh, was uh, he got a green, not a green card. His wife was a U.S. citizen, so he became a naturalized U.S. citizen. But he still went home to Canada for all of his medical stuff. And he once said to me when we were talking about some of this stuff, he says, I get tired of people in the Republican Party saying how much we Canadians hate our health care system. He said, that's a damn well, lie. No, I, every Canadian I've ever talked to likes their health care yeah. system. You know. I do want to correct one thing. Yes. I mean, you said something about what did Medicare do. You realize that the sizable percentage of seniors, 30% of them, never had health insurance. They were paying 100% of their health costs. We're still we're talking about something a long time. I'm talking about right now. To begin with, we were handed with Medicare this this 80% deal. Why couldn't it have been, is 20 more percent? 80% is better than zero. Well, but 100% is ideal. So right, that so that we're not at the mercy, bad, bad. so that we're not in the end at the mercy of insurance companies. Okay, what would you have done, Alex? What? To change that. If you had the power, what would you? What would I would you pay a hundred percent rather than eighty percent. All right, how would you have made that happen in an imperfect political system? Me? Yeah, I'm not a politician. Right I'm not a politician. I wouldn't have been asked to vote on 80% that. Eighty percent was all Johnson could get passed. It, yeah, That's all they could get passed because somehow we had to keep the insurance companies happy. Yeah, because they were financing everybody's political campaigns. So you pay you pay two hundred dollars uh, out of your social security for Medicare, and then you pay another maybe three hundred dollars for the supplemental. That's five hundred bucks a month. You know, that's uh, how many months in a year? Six thousand dollars a year you're putting out, and you've got Medicare. Well, there's a lot of people younger than sixty five that have to pay six thousand dollars deductible before they ever get one penny of medical Listen, I, I'm arguing why why are we saying 65 for Social Security? They're, and they raise it every year. You know, it's about 66 years old now. Why don't we just make it 55? I mean, because nobody can get hired over 55 anyway. Exactly. Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, uh, Jeff. When I was in Australia for a, a short time, Mm -hmm. And I needed, I typically have to get some blood tests and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it was time for that. So I went in and I said, where do I go to get that done? Well, why don't you come right into the hospital here? And they said, what medications do you take? Are there any ones that you don't have? And they said, Here's the drugs that you you might need. And by the way, here's the test that you ought to take. And we'll give you this test. I said, terrific. How much would it cost? He said, cost? What are you talking about? Yeah. I've heard that about, Zero. about I've I've heard that about Australia, that if you get sick in Australia, Zero. they will just let you in the hospital and take care of you. Well, the Netherlands is like that too. What? Well, actually, that'll happen in the United States. The Netherlands. Yeah. My daughter lived there, there for four go. years. Mm -hmm. Never had to pay a. She had major surgeries twice. Never had to pay a penny out of pocket. Well, actually, that'll happen in the United States also, because most countries that have a national health care plan, if one of their citizens requires medical treatment here. They'll pick up the tab, and that does include Mexico, by the way. Yeah, but they'll pick up the tab. What I'm saying is this wasn't a case in Australia of them, the United States having to pay out for Jeff to get taken care of. They just took care of him because he was somebody in their country. Yep. Well, yeah. well, I, I, I wasn't better. working there. Or right. I wasn't getting paid there. Right. I wasn't right. paying Well, taxes obviously, there. they are better people than we are. So what do we got to do to get like them? The other thing I'd just like to mention, do you guys all know about this lady, uh, Amon, uh, Amanda uh, Garman? No. Okay. She's, she's a very interesting uh, lady uh, who used to be a, uh, a speaker 
She actually talked when the president that we have right now, mm -hmm. when he, she's the poet laureate. Laureate. Oh, the, oh, the young her. girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, she's written and spoke a very interesting way on what she feels about about women and what's going on here mm -hmm. about abortion and she was terrific about it and everybody ought to take a look on the internet. well the woman who wrote the handmaid's tale said well my my story is coming true yeah you know uh, to take that one step further uh we had a uh press release that i got a hold of that uh Louisiana decided they would not have their bill include charging a woman with murder who got an abortion. They just decided that yesterday. That they okay. that they aren't going to? They, yeah, they decided they weren't going to do that because it was originally in their uh, almost duplicate bill of what we have in Texas. Yeah, but they went one step beyond what we did. Well, in that, Texas, in Texas, if somebody has an abortion, can they be charged with a crime? Not yet, but they're working towards it. I mean, uh, suppose you go to another state. Suppose you fly to California, you have an abortion. Are you then... There are states that are working towards that. And actually, in Texas, yes, uh, there is a provision potentially to charge them with a crime and to pay a bounty. How do they know that they were even pregnant in the first place? I mean, let's say somebody gets pregnant. Let's say somebody gets pregnant in Texas, okay? They mm -hmm. think about it for about a minute and a half, and they fly off to California, and they get an abortion, and they come back. How does anybody know that she was even pregnant to begin with? Well, knowing Texans, what they'll do is they say, before you leave the state, you'll have to take a uh, pregnancy test. But you're just going to California. You're going there on a trip. Yeah. But well, somebody all, this stuff is being, all that stuff that's being bounced around is yeah. all completely unconstitutional. Even by Alito's own words but in this draft but opinion. But it's still it's the law right clear. now. It hasn't made it to the court yet. It'll take time. I'm just for saying, I'm just saying that courts. those types of things that are being put out there violate interstate commerce clause. They violate the supremacy clause. And, they and violate the full faith and credit clause. And Charlie says what's going on right now violates an amendment. Let's wait to see how the courts play out. They They're lot. also talking about snitches, too, aren't they? I mean, the, the only person that says that it violates the 13th Amendment that I've heard of in the entire world is Charlie. Well, I've heard some But I'm telling you that, the, that, that Alito addressed these hypotheticals in his own opinion and clearly said, I'm not going there. If it comes back before this court, I won't go there. Well, I mean, if, if this is the I, I, case, I'm just saying that if that's the case, then if you can't gamble in Kentucky and you fly to Las Vegas and you gamble, as soon as you get back to Kentucky, they can't arrest you and charge you with gambling. I get that's how the law works. That's a good, that's a good, very good example, by the way, Josh. Beautiful example, actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, Loving v. Virginia uh, took care of this, you know, a long time ago. Well, you know, you that was a, that was about that was about the couple that was about the interracial couple. Yes, because they were charged with a crime in Virginia. Be, but they Which went somewhere else to get married, right? And then they came back yes. to Virginia and were charged with the crime in Virginia. Yeah. And yeah. it took Correct. ten years. Yeah, 10 go to years Vegas and get a hooker. Come back and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you get the clap. Years, that, so that that's to wind itself through the courts. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. I mean that's all I'm saying is if you're going to discuss it, you discuss what is relevant i mean but people bring that stuff up to scare people and it's not it's, it's not factual it's not right they've right. been saying for 50 years that they're going to get rid of roe v wade and they finally did it well they haven't done it yet they haven't done okay. it okay it, 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 okay. then i would say that, that either that's what the people want okay yeah. or the opposition has had 50 years to do something about it and did nothing and then said please justice alito fix this for us and then when he did a lot of people said oh that's not what we meant well the other half was going to say that too yeah. you shouldn't have asked him to fix it for you okay you look fixed it we got we got the theme playing and uh, we got to say goodbye to jack because he's got to go oh, do well, the wait, show let me wake up i gotta get 
what are you people doing in my bedroom? We'll see you in just a minute. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> go. Go, go, go. Jack does the show after us, by the way, and he'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. Hey, thank you, everybody. It's been nice tonight. Not much, many people watching the show tonight. I don't know what's going on out there. I guess there's some uh, there's some sports out there going on. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, Warriors are ahead by three. Where you see? Last I looked. That, that, that's probably what it's all about. Anyway, thank you so much, uh, 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 Josh, for being with us. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much. Thank you to Alan. Thank you to, always to Charlie, who, whenever he can be here, I consider it a blessing. And the same is true with uh, with uh, Kevin as well. Everybody, you know, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? And then fade to my camera. There we go. Okay, that's it. That's all she wrote for tonight. Uh, that's all she wrote for the week. We'll be back here on Monday for the Alex Bennett pop-up, which is on Facebook. Okay. And then we, uh, uh, at 4 o'clock on Facebook. And then we'll be back again right here on uh, Wednesday at 1030. Uh, it's uh, Eastern time, by the way. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, and have a nice weekend, everybody. Bye.